Images of what Canadian soldiers saw in Afghanistan over a decade at war. Some of them came home with permanent scars, and now they're wondering if those scars were preventable. The Canadian forces gave them a drug to fight malaria that they're now finding out may have caused long-term damage to their brains. The CBC's Nancy Wood now with the side effects of war. Donald Hookey has been home for six years now, but Afghanistan still haunts him. Until recently, Hookey blamed his rage and nightmares on post-traumatic stress disorder. But now he wonders if an anti-malaria drug given to him by the Canadian Army played a role. It really freaks me out reading what I've been reading on the on the side effects of the drugs. Mefloquin, also called larium, is one of three drugs prescribed to prevent malaria in Canadian troops in Afghanistan and some African nations. But research now shows that in some people, it can build to toxic levels and possibly cause permanent brain damage that mimics PTSD or head injuries. In 2009, the U.S. military issued a warning about it, saying even though most soldiers tolerate it well, mefloquine can cause psychotic behavior and should not be routinely prescribed. CBC News has learned that the Canadian Forces has not updated its policy in years and continues to offer mefloquine as an option to its soldiers. Dr. Remington Nevin has been studying the effects of mefloquine. The very worst case scenario is that a soldier that suffers toxicity from mefloquine is left with permanent brainstem injury. The drug dates back to the Vietnam War, a time when the U.S. Army was losing soldiers daily to malaria. Army scientists searched for new drugs to fight the mosquito-borne disease. From the start, soldiers reported disturbing side effects with mefloquine, vivid nightmares, hallucinations, even psychosis. The drug companies have always warned of having side effects and told travelers to switch to another drug if it happens. These could be an indication, an early warning sign of a developing more serious brain condition, a toxicity caused by rising levels of the drug. For the first time, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control's Yellow Book Traveler Advisory this year issued a warning about mefloquine, saying it should not be used for military deployments because those side effects can easily be confused with PTSD or brain injury. Mefloquine is still available in the U.S. and Canada, where Health Canada says it's effective and generally well tolerated. We show Dr. Nevin documents obtained from the Canadian Forces by the CBC. Yes, and it would appear that Canada is, is behind. He worries about the long-term impact. I think you'll be finding many vo more veterans coming forward with legitimate claims against their government. Soldiers have been concerned about mefloquine for years. In 2003, Kevin Berry was a 19-year-old infantryman in Afghanistan. My section commander had been in Somalia and Rwanda. You know, he said, get ready to go loopy, boys. Barry and others began to experience anxiety, aggression, and vivid nightmares. He stopped taking it, but didn't dare tell his superiors. They made it abundantly clear that we would be charged if we weren't taking it. Donald Hookey wishes he'd stopped, like some of the men in his unit. Maybe I should have been one of those guys, huh? <laughs> we asked the Canadian forces for an interview about their policy on mefloquine. They turned us down. Nancy Wood, CBC News, Montreal.